All right, the XS400 build continues. It's looking really good. In the last episode, we actually did the entire wiring harness on the bike, and I made a dedicated video for you guys showing you my process for designing and building a wiring harness on your custom build. So hopefully you guys check that out. But this video, we're gonna be working on the ignition system because we're doing a slightly unorthodox setup and I've been requested to make a video on it. So we're gonna jump right in. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm gonna use, the thought process behind it, and I'll show you guys how to install it. Now the basic details, this is a 1981 Yamaha XS400. And in factory form, it uses this big old igniter down here. So it's electronic ignition. Now they've made the 400 with a points-based system. They've also made the 360s and stuff with points. But this one, like I said, it does have the electronic ignition. Now this system right here is of course an upgrade over the original points-based system back in 1980. But the issue with this here is if this goes bad and when it goes bad, it, you're going to have a hard time finding a replacement for this and it's going to be very, very expensive and you're not going to know if that's even good. So what I prefer to do is go with a modern electronic ignition when possible. So for this instance, I'm going to try to retrofit a PAMCO setup I got from Mike's XS and we're going to try to fit it on this uh, electronic ignition based bike. So. This is actually advertised to fit a points-based bike, but let me show you exactly how we're gonna make it work. Now, the earlier bikes, the 360s and some of the early 400s, they had points. So, a points-based system is very simple. They've been around forever. You can find parts for them, and they're generally very reliable, but you do have to make adjustments and keep up with them. So, the points-based system uses a mechanical advance unit, and this is pretty common for about every points-based bike. It has an alignment pin on the back and it sits on the camshaft in a specific position. So this rotates around and tells the bike when to fire, blah, blah, blah. Eventually they went to an electronic system and what they're doing here is using a magnetic pickup and rotor. So there is no adjustment for advance on this thing. So it's fixed and all of that advance is built into the igniter, that big old box down below I've already showed you guys. Now, when it came time to do the ignition for this bike, I knew I wanted to go with a more modern setup, but this is not advertised to fit an electronic ignition fitted XS400. So I did a little bit of digging and it turns out that the camshaft itself, the physical part number is the same between like XS360s and 400s. So they never changed that. And basically they just built this system around the existing area to adapt it to electronic ignition. So what that tells me is that the original point space system, all of these components will fit. Case in point, that advanced mechanism fits directly on there and it's going to work perfect. So that tells me we can fit this electronic system just like we would a point space system. So we'll get a little bit closer and I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's very simple. Now the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is get your engine in the correct position to do this. So what we're gonna be doing is putting it on LT, which is top dead center on the left cylinder. You want that to be on the compression stroke. So what you can do to make sure you're in the right spot is look at your intake valve. So it's gonna be opening and then closing. And then the next time you pass that LT mark, you know you're on the compression stroke. Now, if you did this correctly, the pin should be in the 12 o'clock position. And this is the alignment pin for your advanced mechanism. Now for me to make this work, I went ahead and got on eBay and found an entire point space system. So I had all of the components here. I removed this piece and while I was at it, I completely disassembled this like I do everything and I cleaned it. And of course made sure that the weights are gonna be moving as they should because this determines your ignition advance. So what we do next, of course, we note the alignment tab. Put that on, you can feel it spin and then lock into place. So that is installed. Next up, we take a look at our plate here. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is what is picking up the signal as the magnets pass by. So this will get installed. And then you notate that little mark right there. That's also gonna be sitting at the 12 o'clock position. So I'm gonna get some screws, lock this thing down, and we'll be right back. All right, as you see, we have the plate installed. We have the advanced mechanism in the bike here. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't move and gets back in the alignment mark if it does. After that, 
We're gonna go ahead and install the rotor. So right here on the rotor, you can see a timing mark. You can see the corresponding magnet locations. So this timing mark is also going to be in the 12 o'clock position. So we go ahead, put a rotor on, make sure it engages. After this, we have a copper thrust washer that's included with the kit. Then we have our bolt, which is too long. Dig into the hardware, looking for the right bolt. Let's try this. Damn it. This is bullshit. Why? Why? Now we can install the bolt. And from here, we'll torque it to 90 pounds per inch. Right there. Now the next thing you wanna check is to make sure that the advance works. So take it in your hand, rotate, make sure it springs back. So that's what advances your timing, so you really need that. Now as far as the wiring is concerned, your lower pickup here is for the left cylinder. The top one is for the right cylinder. So the harnesses that come with this kit each have the same color code, so green, red, and black. The black wires are going to be ground. The red wires are going to be your switched 12 volt. And then the green wires are your signal. So of course you take the lead for the left pickup here. You run that green signal to your left coil. And then on the right side, you would run that green wire to your right coil. So simple as that. Now as shown, we have three wires on either pickup. So two powers, two grounds, and two signals. So the yellow wires on my coils are going down to the switched 12 volt along with the red wires on the pickups. Those are going back into the harness, same power supply. The black wires are of course going to ground those snake up onto my common ground for the chassis. And then the green wires or the pickups are going into the black wires on the coils. So you can run these ones either way, but definitely confirm that that's what you could do on your coil setup. So overall, very simple. Now the following steps after this would be to actually start the bike and get it timed correctly using a timing light. Now all of that is outlined in the actual instructions provided by Mike's XS. So be sure to check the description on that. We can't really go that far because this bike is not exactly running yet, but hopefully soon we will. Now, if you guys haven't seen the wiring harness episode that was before this, definitely check that out. And uh, hopefully we can look for a first start video coming up pretty soon. I got to do the carburetors on this thing and button up a few loose ends, but we're, we're in the home stretch. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them, but realistically I have never used this system. So I really have no information to go on, but this was at least a tutorial on how to install a Pamco system for an earlier XS 400 on a later XS 400 that came with electronic ignition. So again, hope you guys liked it and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.